Hello everyone, welcome to the first uh, OpenCog tutorial in preparation for Google Summer of Code 2009. My name is Joel Pitts and I'm going to do a series of videos about the um, economic attention allocation framework within OpenCog and I've decided I'm going to do them in, uh, as separate parts uh, for each mind agent that's involved in attention allocation. Um, or ECAN is an abbreviation for it which I may refer to while I'm talking about it and I just want to break it up into smaller videos so that it's easier for people to sort of look at what they're interested in and it also means that if I um, stuff up halfway, halfway through it won't be such a big deal because I can just go back and redo that bit. Um, so here we are on the main website so you've probably all seen it by now uh, I'm going to make the assumption that you've already um, been able to compile and uh, compile OpenCog. If you haven't, then jump on the IRC channel and, or not that one, um, the OpenCog IRC channel, and we'll try and sort you out or put send a message to the mailing list. Um, so, with attention allocation, the basic idea is that we want to have some idea some clue of which um, atoms or are important at a given time and to ensure that they're in the memory of a particular OpenCog instance and um, to guide reasoning processes so that we can uh, with there often be m multiple options that um, so P PLN or other reasoning systems can choose from and if we've got some kind of um, ranking between the different options based on the att attention, the current attention of the system, then that can hopefully um, give rise to um, more intelligent um, choices about which uh, chain of thought to go down to, down through. So basically what this consists of is, um, I'll, I'll find the appropriate file for us. So in the atom space, there is an attention value um, class, and this contain this is what every um, atom has associated with, and it basically consists of um, a short term importance, a long term importance, and a very long term importance. And these are different; these are the currencies of attention allocation in OpenCog. The short term importance is kind of like what what's in the um, what's important to the system right now um, and that d divides atoms into those that are in the attentional focus which can sort of be thought can be thought of as the conscious mind of the system or well, that's the what analogy that I use um, when I'm thinking about it there's long-term importance which indicates how important it is to keep that atom around in future so that it doesn't get forgotten um, these these are both used to some extent in the um, the case, well, the the swapping mechanisms for w which memory, which atoms should be in memory at a given time, but uh, they we we haven't quite worked that out, and obviously we're we're still working just in memory at the moment. But if you've been following the recent discussions on the mailing list, we're you know getting towards a point where we're trying to work that out. Um, there's also this very long term importance um, member, and that basically allows you to make atoms permanent so that they'll never be forgotten. Um, um, so that's yeah, that's the attentional value and you're not meant to actually change this directly in any of your code. Um, the way that that happens is uh, mind agents are meant to confer um, stimulus to, to do actually where are the mind agents? They're in server. No. Uh, I've forgotten where they are. Bear, oh, that's right. Bear with me for a second. There we go. Um, mind agents are in OpenCog's uh, server and under agent dot h, and what they have is they can 
specify that um, w when they're working they give um, atoms stimulus so if they use a particular atom and they think it's important they go along and um, say okay well, I'm going to give you some stimulus and then if that mind agent uses that uses the atom and ends up fulfilling a system goal somehow then the mind agent is rewarded by the system with um, some with some STI and um, LTI, short and long term importance and the importance updating agent takes this the mind agent um, STI, LTI and converts the stimulus that it's given to different atoms into short and long term importance for those atoms. So it c the the currency of attention goes from the atom space into the mind agent and the mind agent then distributes the um, has its short and long term importance distributed based on which atoms it's given stimulus to um, and the, there are there are other ways that short and long term importance can move around um, or there will be but this is uh, one concrete way that already exists um, so now um, that's kind of a basic overview of the the, the components of short, long, short and long term importance. They're in the intention value class, and the agent um, agents give stimulus to atoms. So I'm going to go to the importance updating agent, which is responsible for doing turning the stimulus into um, into short and long term importance. And so, as you can see in this in the doxygen comments, the agent um, first converts this agent stimulus into STI and LTI. It also is responsible for doing rent collection, and atoms are charged rent both for on their STI and LTI for different reasons. They are charged rent on their STI based on um, whether or not they are in the attentional focus of the system. So, if it's if it's in the imp a conscious mind of the, oh, I, again I use conscious mind, but it's just an, an analogy that helps me think of it, and rather than saying the attentional focus all the time, um, well, it's, it's just a different way of looking at it. So, when when atoms are in the attentional focus, um, they are charged rent on their STI. And then, when then then all atoms are charged rent on their LTI, um, just for being in the atom space. So it's kind of like a um, yeah, sort of LTI is the base tax for all atoms, and they slowly get less and less important unless they're pumped with more long-term importance from um, other mind agents. Now. The importance updating agent also um, attention within the system is meant to be conserved. So, whenever um, STI or LTI, LTI moves around, it's never lost. It sort of it moves from one place to another. So there's a fixed amount in the system, and um, the atom space has a sort of a pool of funds which will prevent the has a pool of funds which ensure that they're conserved. So occasionally you, you want to like give a, uh, an atom more STI, or the attention allocation system does, and it'll keep track of how much, where all the STI is. So you can never lose STI LTI out of the system. And in order to minimize the amount of um, shuffling that goes on, um, it sometimes has to adjust the rent, and um, it, it ma ensures that the atom space funds stay within a certain um, bounds. If it goes outside of that, then it starts doing taxes or refunds of L STI and LTI to atoms. So there's a whole bunch of um, further comments if you want to have a read through that. Um, now we'll go through some, go through the class, and I'll sort of explain what the different parts do. I'm not going to go right into the um, the implementation of it all, but um, if people are really interested in that, then I can uh, put together something in that regard, or we can just discuss it in the tutorial, which is on April the 15th, um, 2009, for people that are list, uh, watching this in the future. Now, uh, so yeah, 
obviously, and here it's from the uh, agent interface or agent class, and we have uh, members for keeping track of what the uh, the rent currently is. There's a thing called Amnesty, which um, allows Adams to go into the attentional focus for a little bit, like a, a, a slight amount, without being charged rent. And this is mainly for some work that I was doing with the Hopfield network. So, um, but you know, it's there if people want to play around um, with the attention dynamics. Um, this is kind of a, a important overall function that just calculates the rent for any given um, value of STI. So if you've got a atom that has an STI of 10, then it will tell you how much of that STI has to be charged as rent. So because obviously, if it's um, if it's above the attentional focus threshold, it will return a, a positive um, rent. Or if it's less than that, then it will just be zero. And this can also do some inter more interesting ways of charging rent where there's the further you're into the eventual focus the more you're charged so it's kind of like um, having a progressive taxation scheme um, next we have the yeah these are the, the um, wages that um, atoms get per stimulus point that they're given from at mind agents. These, one, um, these first ones are the maximum that they can actually be given at any one time um, per stimulus and this is the um, the amount, the wage that each atom gets um, per agent. So agents will have a different amount of STI to hand out so that the, the wages might be um, slightly different on how much that how they convert their stimulus into STI and LTI. Um, so again, there's calculate atom wages. That's um, what works out these bits. Um, Jared, uh, well not Jared, sorry, uh, Trent Warrington worked out um, this agent system. So I'm not sure about the exact specifics. Well, I checked it over, but I'm not as intimately familiar with it as the rest of the system. Um, there's also values to prevent the STI and LTI of any particular atom getting too high. It's possibly not needed, but again, this is a lot of this is stuff that I've been doing, like update links, whether or not to update the STI and LTI of links rather than just nodes. And um, in the actual system, this won't be that relevant. But you know, the more the more configurability there is, the more easier it is to experiment with stuff, as that's probably going to be a large uh, require take up a lot of um, time once the system is more integrated. We're going to have a lot. Want to play a lot around a lot with the dynamics. Um, so there's other things like random stimulation. This is just you know putting some noise into the system, um, keeping track of the total amount of stimulus that's been given out, um, and look at keeping track of how many a uh, atoms are in the attentional focus. There is also keeping track of whether the atom space funds have gone outside of the range that we've um, deemed acceptable, and so if that happens, then we want to go and update the rent. Here we have an update. Uh, yeah, here here we update the actual um, STI that the the agents get. So there's um, you know whether this should stay in the points updating agent or not is a, a, a question that may need to be addressed in future but at the moment it's there and then there's these ones that update the STI and LTI for atoms and then we keep going down some other things not that interesting things for updating the rent um, miscellaneous other functions mm. Yeah, that's most of it. And yeah, with the agent um, public interface, there's things like the the main run method that the cog cog server calls to make it uh, do its thing, and you know things for actually modifying some of these configuration um, bits that the agent works with. So. Um, and yeah, the, I mentioned before that there's different rent types, so you can use these different. Um, 
the uh, enumerated rent types to set how it calculates rent um, which should be somewhere oh it's not actually publicly available so that's obviously something that I need to um, alter unless it's in the yeah no I have to, I have to it's a something for me to fix in the future um, so uh, I'm going to leave that there um, so that's the importance of updating your agent. I'm next going to talk about some of the other um, parts that are part of um, part of the attention allocation system. So you can see that there's also a um, importance diffusion agent, a Hebian updating agent, um, and a forgetting agent. So those are the ones that I'm going to talk about. There's a couple of other here, like the spreading one, which is kind of obs obsolete, but I think we may have to resurrect when we start um, looking at important spreads, uh, especially in distributed systems. Um, and STI, STI decaying agent, which is a very basic way of um, doing charging sort of rent for atoms, which is from an old uh, Novamente Novo system, I think. So yeah, uh, I will sign off now and the next one will be on the Hebian updating agent. Thanks for tuning in.